a little bit up. <laughs> it's seven all. Let me get it out of seven. Let me get out of Can you get out of this thing? No. Hey, no matter what, this pattern. No matter this pattern, you come again. Okay, okay. I need you to believe me. You got one more. Yeah. You better believe me. Alright, guys. Hey, just come get him. Hey, this guy, if, if there's not an out after this guy, come get me. Okay, we're with Coach Beeson. Yeah. Coach Beeson, it is the bottom of the seventh inning. Five four. Five, four. How do you feel right now coming into the city with your clothes on the mound? Well, I feel okay. The wheels came off for a little bit, but I think we got him back on. We got size love on the mound, and well, he's okay. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I've exhausted all my other resources, so so we're just hoping we can pull this off. So that's what I'm hoping for, and I'm hungry. <laughs> success um, with results and uh, that can kind of it obviously it, you know can show out here but also can trickle over into your spiritual life as well and uh, you can a lot of times you can wrap up your identity in your performance um, and so I, I want to encourage you guys today to focus on the process not only physically but also spiritually as well so one way that this works out in the field and I was actually talking to my brother this morning about it and, and clearly um, he's got it figured out uh, he, I think he had two jacks two doubles but we we're talking about you know <clears throat> your approach out here, you come out here and you think, man, I want it home run, which is what I did in that cave. Um, so I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, you can come out here, try to hit home run, try to hit a double, or you can focus on getting your best swing off and focusing on the process. That's something you can control. You can't control if you hit a home run. Yes, you're going to swing and you may hit one, but uh, I want to encourage you guys to focus on the process and not really focus on the results. You can get really caught up in it. And uh, some things that I noticed for me when I was in baseball is um, it, it kind of it paralyzes you in ex in, to an extent because it's not something you can control one and then two when it starts um, when it, you start performing poorly you kind of start getting down on yourself um, so I want to encourage you guys on that front but also mo most importantly uh, let's see here spiritually um, you know you can focus on going to your Bible studies reading your Bible which is which are all great things um, but really the true process that I found is focusing on developing a love relationship with Jesus um, you can uh, have a knowledge of him but not, not actually know him and that's kind of somewhere where uh, where the gap has kind of been slowly filled for me. And so, um, you know, you can read your Bible every day, you can pray every day, you can fast, you can do all these great things, which are, you know, biblical, um, but you can actually not know God. So, you know, I think um, for many, many years, when I was specifically going through that difficult time, I knew all the right answers. I mean, I was at faith, uh, even though uh, character-wise, I didn't have great character, I knew the answers. If you asked me, I mean, I could tell you Jesus, I could tell you the verse. Um, but the relationship wasn't there, and I think of it this way. So you have, let's say, you guys I'm all like girls, I'm sure, I hope. And so, um, <laughs> let's say you have a girl, okay? And she looks great from a distance, you got her Facebook information, you may even have a, like a bio of her, a birth certificate, I don't know how you got that, but you have it, and you're studying it, right? And you're looking at it, and you're looking at it, and do you, can you love that person? Do you know that person? You may have a bunch of great resources and information about her, but have you entered into a love relationship with them? Have you have you talked to her? Have you gone on a date with her? So you know, I think sometimes we uh, we forget that God is a relational God, um, and so the same way that you interact with a guy or girl or mom or dad is the same way you can interact with Jesus. Just talk to him, pray with him, be with him. So um, I know sometimes we can get caught up and in going to the Bible studies, doing different things. But I want to encourage you guys too, as long as you know, as well as focusing on the process here, and just trying to get your best swing off, do your best. Um, focus on just that relationship with Jesus and as an outflow of that you're going to be doing all the spiritual activities um, and so you know for a long time I was just performance based um, and I want to read this verse here I unfortunately don't have it memorized but I wrote down John 15 5 I'm sure you guys are familiar with this it talks about um, the vine you guys familiar with that and abiding in the vine let's see pull it up here sorry for the delay John 15. Um, and I think it's uh, a perfect example of kind of staying process focused with our relationship with Jesus. So it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. So that, that's that, you know, that's the, 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 uh, the, the performance, right? Bears much fruit. But this is the most important part. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So if you're focusing on um, your performance and doing the Bible study and different things, you can still be doing that and not actually be abiding in the Lord. So I encourage you guys, focus on developing that love relationship. He's no different than your mom or your dad in regards to how you um, grow with him. So talk with them, um, share with them your heart. If you're frustrated, if you're happy, share it with them. Um, and the last thing I had was uh, just Philippians 1.6. It says, uh, I'll go pull it up, I don't want to butcher it. <clears throat> Anyone know that verse by, by chance offhand? Can you save me the reference here? Anyone? No? 
trivia? Axe? No. Uh, uh -huh. um, I think it's... Coach, do you know? I'm pulling, trying to pull out my memory bank right here. <clears throat> Same. It might be the... Uh, Here's the test. Can I spell Philippians right Servant. And I'm sure of this. I'll just go. I can't get it loaded up my hand. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in me um, will see it to completion. So, guys, be encouraged. Most of you, I hope, um, are believers. If you're not, I would love to talk to you after this. Um, but just know that he has called you according to um, his will to do great things on this earth. And he's going to see you to completion in spite of um, your mistakes and great mess ups. Jesus is there to pick you up. You have a brand new identity in Christ. Um, and so I hope you guys can just cling to process, you know, process focused baseball out of here, you know, getting your, getting your best swing on, not worrying about, you know, you guys, as you guys saw, my head was literally out here looking for where the ball was at as it was going past me. So I should have been focusing on the process and, you know, barreling the ball, right? So, um, I hope you guys can be encouraged by this and understand that, um, I was so far gone in regards to, uh, just myself as a person. And uh, Coach can speak to you guys later. I mean, it was bad. Um, but once again, I didn't know it at the time, but God was going to see me to completion. So I love you guys. I'm so proud to be a part of the Faith Legacy here. Um, I'm looking forward to playing you guys next year. We'll be training hard. I'll be, getting, I'll, I'll probably be getting Tommy John surgery after this. I think they're going to be wheeling me in. Uh, so let's, uh, let's break it out.